So, the pattern, 1853 musket. Uh, this is this is my favorite. I get excited every time I hold this fucker in my hands. Um, so, a little, little bit of history. All right, this has been around the world. Okay, been around the world. It was de developed in 1853. It saw final production uh, um, in 18 in 1867. So, Civil War started in 1860, 1860, 1861. This already had the kinks worked out of it. This fucker was devastating in the Civil War. I can see why the Confederacy wanted to hog this all to themselves. And speaking of hogs, uh, Stephen Ray, he's from Arkansas. <laughs> I have kin. In Arkansas. I got a shitload of family in Arkansas. So. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> hell yeah. Um, Forest City, Jonesville, uh, Jones, uh, Jonesboro. Um, Wynn. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that's pretty badass. Uh, Arkansas Razorbacks, man. Fucking right. So. <laughs> that's badass. So. <laughs> actually redid this whole beginning because I saw that comment that he was in Arkansas. That's pretty badass. So, let's get back to the Enfield. Uh, the Enfield is just... It's a work of art. It really is. And, and the Brits that thought up of this flat out thought of it. They, they really, really thought about it. I mean, it's well thought out, well made, well designed. It's just, and here's the sick part about it. This thing saw combat around the world. 13 different, is it 13? No, I think nine different countries are using it. Japan was using this fucking thing. It's, this thing saw 13 different wars. 13 war, 13 different wars. You know how much meat this fucker's already harvested by the time it hit American shores? You know what I mean? It's just, it's just crazy. So, that's just, it, the platform's it, you know, I, I tell you, the British, man, they knew how to make a fucking firearm back then. The Brown Bess, badass. Um, the Enfields, badass. They, 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 just, they, they just know how to, they just know how to do it, you know what I mean? Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I'm very excited when I pick this bad up, when I pick this badass up, I, I am just so excited. Granted, it is an, a reproduction, but it doesn't matter to me. You know, it's a well-made reproduction. It holds true um, to everything that that the. Uh, I think the only thing different. I don't know. I don't know about the bluing. I'm out to check out. But this bluing sets it apart to me a lot uh, when it comes down to the Springfield. And 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 the 1863 Springfield too. It sets it apart because the bluing protected it, and it, it just you don't have to worry about shining it up. You know what I mean? It protected the steel. So I don't know if the because I know um, the, the 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 brown best they brown the barrels a lot. So I don't know if they did the same to the Enfields. I'm gonna have to check up on that because. You know, I mean, I, I you know, I, I, can't, I can't presume to know everything. Um, so anyways, this is my video on the Enfield. Um, my favorite reenactment war platform right here. Uh, this is my favorite shooter. When I go down range, when I start planking, this is, this is my favorite fucking shooter. And uh, yeah. Oh, I love this thing. Vermont Survivals. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The pattern. 1853 Enfield. My favorite platform by far. My favorite black powder platform that you could, that you can possibly own. It's this fucker right here. This thing is so well made, okay? The Enfield is just, they were thinking when they made this. 
And the Brits, man, when they in, the, in that time period, they were just badass. They just, they just thought everything. They're just like, yeah, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. This is a good idea. Oh, yeah, we got the crown right there. So, this has a direct thing to the chamber, a direct line to the chamber when it comes to firing. You put your percussion cap in there, and there you go. And boom, you're good to go. So why don't we get in some specs? The weight is nine and a half pounds. Nine and a half pounds. It's pretty good, right? Um, length of the, total length is 55 inches. Total length of the barrel is 35 inches, 34 inches, 35 inches, somewhere around there. So it's a little bit shorter than your than your Springfield. Um, the lock is very simplified. I mean, very simple. Very nice little lock set up there. The it has a ramrod, but the difference between is that the, look at the ramrod. The ramrod has everything you need. I mean, you don't need to screw in anything. You know, it has the patch jig, you know, it has the ball rammer, and the ramrod's nice and thick. The barrel bands, you can screw off and take off. Um, it, like I said, it's just very, very user-friendly. A lot smoother to shoot, too. You can see why the Confederacies were trying to hog this fucking thing to themselves. Now, do not get me wrong. A lot of them did make it out to the Union. Um, there's a few units that actually been outfitted with them. But for the main, for the main thing is uh, the Confederate. But when I do reenacting, <laughs> yeah, bitches. I, 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 carry, I carry this. I, I don't do the Springfield. After I got my, after I got my dick skins on this bad boy, that's it, man. I was hooked. I was absolutely hooked. It feels so great around the hands. I mean, it just feels good. You know what I mean? Um, accuracy. I got like 1,200, 1,300 meters. Some shit like that. It's crazy shit. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be shooting that long range. I mean, I barely think you would even see it with, it, with no optic, with no glass on that bad boy. Um... Rounds per minute, well, that's the same thing as any other musket. Four, uh, two to four, four rounds a minute. Um, so that really hasn't changed. Still muzzle loading, still shoots mini balls, round balls, shot, you name it, uh, bird shot. You can buck and ball it. You can, uh, you can pretty much do anything with it. Uh, this right here is just a handheld because this thing heated up uh, when I was in Gettysburg and uh, almost fried my hand. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, my hand was hot. I was wearing wool gloves. So, this is a serious piece, man. This is this is like serious. This is a Penasoli, I think. I think it's a Penasoli. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's a Penasoli. I got this. Uh, so, I did a lot of work on this. My friend had had this musket uh, before I did, one on a fellow reenactor, and I did a lot of work on it. You know what I mean? I, I did a lot of work on this and on his uh, Springfield, I think. And he he ended up buying a brand new Enfield, and he offered this to me, and I said, "Fuck yeah!" I jumped to it uh, because I actually loved the Enfield. I was looking to get an Enfield. And I absolutely love, I fell in love with it. You know, after working on it for, hey, hey, I think, think this is what happens, you know what I mean? You start touching stuff, you know what I mean? You start touching her a little bit, you know, play, playing with her. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's just some sort of attraction there. Um, so the sight is broken. It's fucked up. I broke it. Um, I, need, I need to put a new sight on. I just haven't had the motivation to put the sight on. Do the fact of reenactments. There was no reenactments last year. We went to a couple of them, but it wasn't really reenactments. It was like ceremonies and shit. It was kind of shitty. Um, so it does take a socket bayonet. 
And, uh, yeah. I really don't know what else to say about it. You know, it's, uh, it's a 58 caliber. Uh, you can use bucket ball. The powder charge on it is, uh, is definitely, uh, you want to keep it between 50 and, and 75. Um, and it can definitely, definitely, definitely toss some lead downrange if need be. Uh, the problems that you're probably going to run with these type of muskets is, uh, you may have some scaling issues. You, you, you got to clean them. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and, and that's the thing. Um, you, you got to pay attention to them. It's, it's not, it's not as bad as the flintlock, but you got to pay attention to it. Nonetheless, it's a black powder and, uh, you will have issues and flat out mineral spirits and rubbing alcohol is your friend, even baby wipes. If you just want to, and I generally use baby wipes and there's a couple reasons why I use baby wipes. I think one, one of the main reasons why is something I don't get water down in the stock. It's it just, wow, dude. This fucks up everything. But this 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 bad boy right here can take it right off the stock and just run it down the barrel. So I really don't have to worry about it. So you can run hot water in it. But yeah. Um it's the same, pretty much the same thing internally as the as the Springfield. Uh of course this isn't a real um a real Enfield. You know what I mean? But this is this is modeled after an original. Obviously, reproduction one. Um, I wish I had a real Enfield. I'd probably never use it. I, I, maybe it's a good thing because I'd be too tempted to use it. I would have to use it. What's the point of having something if you can't use it? Right? So, the percussion caps... Um, you know, I, I don't know where the com people complain about the percussion caps. Um, you know, they have to worry about it. You see, you see, you see a lot of traditional muzzle loading guys. They'll talk about flintlocks, how they're superior. I, I don't, I don't find them superior. Uh, the percussion caps, you can get those a dime a dozen. I, I shit you not. It's just crazy. They're 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 all over the place. Um, I I got, I got so many of them. It's ridiculous. So I really don't find the problem uh the other problems that you could have is you could have it shooting on half cock that's easy enough it's a tumbler um if, if you guys don't know um also this will also accumulate uh powder on the bottom like right out right in the chamber there so you gotta thoroughly clean these out or else you're gonna get a fucking wad of spent powder and, and people don't realize when you pour the water in, right, and it starts doing its thing, you know, and you shake it around a bit, you know what I mean? So so essentially what you're doing, and all the hard shit is going to sink right to the bottom of that chamber. So you got to really, really get in there. You got to get a, a uh, well, there's two tools I use. Hold on. Since we're talking about tools. Well, since we're talking about cleaning. Tool, tool, two tools that are a must. Inside this bag here, this is pretty much my jig bag. Oh, look at that. Yeah, this this is my friend right here. I'll tell you, man, a magnet. You take, you bring a magnet. You can put your screws, your small screws and stuff, especially when you're working on your lock. That comes in handy, man. I'll tell you. Put that right on your barrel. It's always good to have a magnet. Get some Nancy Pelosi person coming in. Telling you how your white privilege is getting away. So, this right here is awesome. Um, you can dig on the sides. Not only can you pull patches out, but you can also use it to dig the chamber. Um, get, get all that hard fouling out. And this, a chamber scraper. Uh, this, this comes in handy big time big time um i generally use when i use those i generally use my uh my brown best um ramrod so those are huge to have those are good things to have especially ones that you're constantly shooting 
And again, how you take care of your musket is what you're gonna get out of it. And that's just how it works. So, but this badass, man, I love the Enfield. Um, I think that's all for specs for right now. But yep, the pattern, 1853 Enfield. Something else. Thanks for watching, guys. Vermont Survivalist, as always, good to go.